As someone that have just started learning Active Directory pen testing, I spend a lot of time trying to make sense of the Bloodhound complex graphs. But at a certain point, I realized that if I could learn more about Active Directory objects and relationships, I could gain a deeper understanding of the Bloodhound graphs and read them easily. That's why I decided to make this video. We will take one of the Bloodhound graphs and manually recreate it step by step. We will uncover the different types of Active Directory objects and relationships, also learning how to use tools like PowerView for domain enumeration. This video will give you the skills and the confidence to read the Bloodhound graphs like a pro. Let's get started. As you can see, we have this huge Bloodhound graph in front of us. We are not going to create every node of it manually, but we're going to take the part that's going to elevate our privileges and compromise the domain using PowerView script. And PowerView is a powerful PowerShell script designed for Active Directory enumeration and reconnaissance. I'm gonna leave the link below uh, of the, the tool so you can download it and follow along with me. Now we have already compromised the SVC Alfresco user. This is a low privileged user and we want to elevate our privileges from that user to become admin and having full control. So as you can see here in Bloodhound, we have the SVC Alfresco user that he is a member of the service account group. And the reason Active Directory uses groups is instead of assigning specific permissions or access control to a user, it creates a, a group and assign those permissions to that group and then whenever there is a user that should have these permissions, you just associate the user to the group. I hope that makes sense. Now, this service account group is a member of the privileged IT account and privileged IT account is a member of the account operators group. So what does that mean actually? Basically, the SVC Alfresco is a member of the privileged IT account and account operators group now. And that's what it's called nested group. So nested groups refer to groups that are members of other groups. Now, as we said before, because of the nested groups, SVC Alfresco is a member of the privileged IT account and the account operators. And members of account operators have generic all to exchange Windows permissions group. I know a lot of you get confused when you see these words like generic all, write dac all, get changes, and so on. But stay with me, we're going to explain them in more details. And as you can see here, the Exchange Windows Permissions group have a right DECL to the domain. And that's mean if we can make the SVC Alfresco a member of the Exchange Windows Permissions group, we will have a right DECL to the domain and maybe compromise it. We will explain what will write DECL mean later in this video. Let's run our shell with the SVC Alfresco credentials, who I am. I'm SVC Alfresco. And let's download PowerView. So I have already run a Python server. Let's download it using wget, the IP address, and the PowerView script. The out file is powerview.ps1. Cool. Now let's load PowerView to the memory. So import module and powerview.ps1. So let's see, we want to know what is the group that SVC Alfresco is a member of. We're going to type get domain group dash uh, member identity SVC Alfresco. So this command is going to get groups that are part of the domain. And the condition is that the members of this groups must contain the SVC Alfresco user. In other words, give me the groups that SVC Alfresco is a member of. And as you can see, we've got a lot of information. But what we are interested on is the same account name, member of, and the member attribute. The same account name must be unique for every user and computer object in the domain. And the member of attribute shows the groups that this object is a member of. And the member attribute shows the object that are member of the current group. So as you can see, we have this first some account name, which is service account. And the members of this group as SVC Alfresco. And that's what our command did. It returns the groups that the SVC Alfresco user is a member of. And the member of attribute shows us that the service account group is a member of the privileged IT account. Now, what we have learned from this first part is that the SVC Alfresco is a member of the service account and the service account group is a member of the privileged IT accounts group. Let's save this on our note. So SVC Alfresco is a member of the service account and the service account is a member of the privileged account group. Cool. Let's go a bit down and examine the next part. Now the same account name attribute is privileged IT account and the member attribute shows us that the service account is a member of the privileged IT account. We already know that. And the member of attribute shows us that the privileged IT account is a member of account operators group. Let's add this to our note file. So 
we said that the service account is a member of the privileged IT account and the privileged IT account is a member of account operators. We can make this a little bit easier by using select. So let's run the same command and pipe the output to as select and select the sum account name, the member of and the member attribute. Hit enter and as you can see this is more easier to read. So I've got the service account group that is a member of the privileged IT account group and the SVC Alfresco is a member of the service account group. At the next line we've got the privileged IT account that is a member of the account operators and the service account is a member of the privileged IT account. Great. So we have achieved like the bloodhound graph, but now we need to look for that generic all thing that the members of account operators groups have on the exchange windows permissions group. And let's talk about what this generic all, write DACL, force change password, generic write means. So in an active directory environment, a resource such as a file or a folder or a registry key has a list of permissions that control who can access it and what actions they can perform on it. And what I mean about who are basically users, groups, computers and active directory objects in general. So a single permission like generic all is an ECE, an access control entry. And a list of ECEs like generic all, write DACL, generic write is called an ECL an access control list. So when a user attempts to access a resource, Windows checks the ECL associated with the resource to determine whether the user has the necessary permission to access it. If the user has an ECE that grants the required permissions, the access is allowed. Otherwise, it's denied. So that's the utility of access control list. Now let's talk about some ECEs and what they mean. So the one we have seen on Bloodhound Graph is generic all. And that's mean that the members of the account operators group have full control on the exchange windows permissions group. The other ECE that you may see is write the ECL. And this one means that we can edit ECEs, access control entries of that object. And we will see how we're gonna use that to elevate our privileges. The next one is write owner. And this one allows you to change the owner of that object. You can change the owner of the object to you and then you have full control of that object. And that we understand what ECEs and ECLs means, whenever you see a new ECE in Bloodhound, you can just check the help button and it will tell you what it means. Cool. Now let's go back to our shell and try to find the generic all ECE that members of account operators have on the exchange windows permissions group. We're going to use PowerView again and make sure to stay till the end because I'm going to show you resources and cheat sheets for the PowerView command so you don't need to remember every single one of them. So first of all, we need to see all the groups that we have. And to do that, we just need to type get net group. And we got a lot of information about every single group in the domain. We got the same account name, object is ID, but we are just interested on the same account name. So let's use the select again, pipe, select, same account name, and boom, we got all groups. Let's save those groups on a variable called groups. Cool. What we need to do now is see what are the objects that have the generic all permissions on each group of this list. To do that, we need to use the get object ECL CM delete. Let's say we want to get all objects that have generic all on account operators group. Just an example. So get object ECL dash identity. We specify the group some account name, which is account operators. Hit enter. As you can see, this didn't return just the generic all ACE, but it returns everything. All access controls that other objects have on the account operators group. For example, the last one here, we have the object distinguished name. We have the object SID. And you may notice that this is getting repeated here. That's mean that this is the SID of the account operators group. Now, if we take a look at the next attribute, which is Active Directory Rights, we can see that it contains generic all. But who has generic all on this object, which is the account operator's object? It's the security identifier attribute. The security identifier attribute contains the SID of the object that has generic all on the account operator's group. We can use the convert SID to name to know the name of the object that has this permissions on account operators. So convert SID to name and pass the SID. And as you can see, it's local system. So that's mean that the local system uh, have generic all permissions on the account operators. 
Now, if we scroll to the top, there are other ACEs, not just generic all. As you can see, this object has generic read on the account operators, and this one has a bunch of ACEs. And instead of calling them like that, we will call them ECL. So create child, delete child, self, generic read, and so on. Great. Now I just want to see the object that has generic all on the account operators group. To do that, we're going to use the where object cm delight. So let's do the same command and a pipeline where object, a curly brace, open parentheses, and a dollar underscore that represent the whole object. So a dollar underscore is the whole object that we piped. And dot active directory writes dash match generic all. And this will only return objects that the Active Directory writes attribute match the generic all. Hit enter, and as you can see, we've got only the objects that have generic all on the account operators group. Great. Now we need to do this for all groups. So we have the groups variable that contains list of Active Directory groups. So let's do a for each dollar group in dollar groups and we're gonna use the get object ACL dash identity group dot sum account name. And we're gonna pipe that to where object dollar underscore dot active directory writes match generic all. So we did the same thing, but for all groups. Now we get a lot of output, but we are only interested on the security identifier and the object SID, because we know that the security identifier SID have generic all on the object SID. Let's use select and select the security identifier and the object SID. From the output, we know that this SID have generic rights on this SID. We need to convert those SIDs into readable names. We're going to use the convert SID to name again. So let's remove this and we're going to do where object at name equals security identifier name expression convert SID to name the object dot security identifier. We do the same things for the object is id so we have at name equal object is id name expression convert is id to name the whole object object is id so i think you understand what we actually did here hit enter and as you can see it returns all objects that have generic all on each group great so the name here stands for the column name and the expression is what is the functionality that we're going to do that this column will contain now, we know that we are members of the account operators group, so we are only interested on what account operators can do. So let's save this on a variable called generic all, and then where object, the whole object dot security identifier name dot match account operators. We only want the line that contains account operators. We are not interested on other object. So let's hit enter, and as you can see, we only got the objects that account operators have uh, generic all on them. Amazing. Now, you can see here that account operators have generic all to exchange Windows permissions. And that's exactly what Bloodhound told us. And if we take this DNS update proxy object, for example, and go to Bloodhound, set account operators as the start node and the DNS update proxy object as the end node. It returns that account operators have generic all over DNS update proxy. That's great. Now what we should do is take all of those groups and do the same things with the domain, hackthebox.local, and see which one of those groups have write DACL or generic all any interesting ECE that will help us compromise the whole domain. It's the same process, so I'm just going to show you the command to do it. So get object ECL dash some account name, hack the box, which is the domain, and pipe that to where object, the object dot active directory writes that match or write the ECL. I wrote or write DECL specifically because we know that uh, Exchange Windows permissions have write DECL on the domain, the hack the box at local, but you can loop through uh, ECEs, access control entries. You can try uh, write DACL, you can try uh, generic all, and all of those stuff. But because we don't have too much time, we go directly to the one that we know already that it exists. So a pipeline, select object, and the name security identifier expression convert is ID to name the object dot security identifier. And as you can see in the output, only exchange Windows permissions exchange trusted subsystems and domain admins and administrators objects can write DACL to the domain. So now from the old output, we know that we have generic all on the exchange Windows permissions group. And from this output, 
Exchange Windows permissions have right DACL on the domain. Let's note that. So generic all give us full control on the Exchange Windows permissions. That's mean I can become a member of that group and the Exchange Windows permissions have right DECL on the domain. That's mean I can change ECEs on the domain. So let me show you how we can do that and elevate our privileges. And you know what? Bloodhound makes that easy for us. Just go to the ACE, right click and help. You can read the info if you don't understand what this ACE can do, but we already know that. Let's click on the abuse info and it show us how we can add ourselves to the exchange per windows permission. Now, first of all, we should know the members of that group. So just run get domain group member exchange windows permission. And as you can see, member name is exchange trusted subsystem. And from the member object class, we learned that this is a group. So instead of using the SVC Alfresco user account, we can create a temporary user and use its credentials to execute this command. Once we are done with the task, then we can delete the temporary user account. It's much better to do it that way. So let's create a secure credential object for that user called new user. So the password of the new user is new user 2023. The sick password object equal to convert to secure string new user 2023 as plain text dash force. I've already explained uh, those commands uh, in all the videos, so I recommend you to go and watch them. And then the credential object cred equal new object system dot management dot automation dot ps credential hack the box slash new user and the sec password object. So let's create the user using the uh, new Active Directory command. So new Active Directory user dash name new user dash some account name new user dash account password the sec password object dash enable true hit enter and the user is created successfully now let's add the user to the exchange windows permissions group from the abuse info we don't need to specify the credential because we are in the svc alfresco session and he's already a member of the account operators group so let's pass this and add the new user to the exchange windows permissions change the members to new user and identity to exchange windows permission hit enter great now, if we take a look at the members of the Exchange Windows permissions again, we will see that the new user is a member of that group. Now, because he is a member of that group, he can write DECL to the domain. So let's go to the abuse info again and see what can we do. And let's copy this command from the abuse info and paste it here. We need to do some changes to it because it's not working. Change the identity to the LDAP format, DC equal to hack the box, DC equal to local, and add the principal name new user and the ECE that we're gonna add is DC sync so because we have write the ACL we can edit ECEs we can add ECEs we can remove ECEs and the ECE that we're gonna add here is the DC sync and if you don't know what is DC sync attack how it works I have created a whole video explaining just how it works and show you the attack technique on a hack the box uh, machine you can click it on the screen or check the description below now let's use secrets dump from the impact script so secrets dump hack the box at local slash new user to appoint new user 2023 at 10 10 10 1 hit enter and as you can see we got all the domain user ntlm hashes now that we got the hash, we can perform the pass the hash attack using evilwinram or psexec. Let's use psexec this time. I think I have used evilwinram in the DC sync video, so let's change a little bit. So psexec.py hack the box dot local slash administrator at 10 10 10 161 dash hashes and paste the hash. As you can see, who I am, NT authority system. That's great. So as I promised you that I'm going to show you some uh, resources and cheat sheet that you should use uh, for the power view command instead of uh, remembering uh, each command. So this is a video from the Black Hat conference that talks about uh, how to use Bloodhounds, how it works. It goes deep on the ECL access control list and the ECEs and also the Bloodhound graphs, how to understand them and how it works. So I recommend you to go and watch it. And this is a GitHub uh, repository that shows you some uh, 
power view and the most useful uh, power view commands that you need to know for the domain enumeration and reconnaissance so uh, that's it for this video and thank you for your time if you really find this video useful and you learn something new please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like the video because we are still uh, we are still a small uh, community so I'm trying to grow with you and making some great content thank you for your time and see you in the next video